This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're broadcasting from inside the UN Climate Change Conference here in Madrid, Spain. We turn now to ground zero of the climate crisis, the Marshall Islands, one of the lowest lying island nations in the world, located in the central Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and the Philippines. The Marshall Islands declared a national climate crisis emergency in October. Earlier this week, Marshall Islands youth activist Carlan Zacras addressed global climate negotiators in a youth forum here at the UN summit. Greetings from the Marshall Islands. Before I came to Madrid, exactly two weeks ago, I experienced 16-foot swells that forced 200 people from their homes. Not only do we have inundations, but we also have the dengue fever epidemic, the flu. And I know just recently, our Pacific neighbors in Samoa are fighting the measles that took 70 lives, 30 of which are children under the age of four. These are illnesses linked to and made worse by climate change. We've been told that if we want to stay in our islands, we'd have to adapt and elevate, and with migration as the only plan B. We're having to deal with these issues that we in the first place did not create. And may I remind you, the Marshall Islands contribution to climate change is only 0.00001% of the world's emissions. This is why our country is pushing for a social media campaign called Mad for Survival. And we encourage everyone to join in. My home is only two meters above water. With the threats of climate change, we'd lose two meters of our culture, our Yahweh, our Manat, our Roro, our Beat, our language, two meters of our legends. This is why we created a youth leaders coalition that has the youth create innovative ways to fight climate change and lobby them towards our leaders. A team of students came up with a new sustainable design for a seawall that our Minister of Environment, David Paul, has shown interest towards. This is why our youth should be more involved when you are in trouble, you find new solutions to face it. And our youth has proven to do so. This is why I'm here, to represent them and their ideas, to be a part of the generation that's going to end the fight against climate change, to voice out the reality of the future that the Marshall Islands is facing, to tell you that we don't want to lose our only two meters. Thank you. That's youth activist Carlin Zachris. For more on the Marshall Islands, we're joined now by Kathy Jetnell Kitchener, poet, climate envoy for the Marshall Islands here at the Climate Summit, also daughter of the president of the Marshall Islands. We welcome you to Democracy Now! Um, <clears throat> ground zero for the climate crisis or catastrophe. And you in the Marshall Islands have declared a climate um, emergency. To explain. Yeah, so we declared a climate crisis this past September before the September Climate Summit. Um, and this really shows that on a national level, we're recognizing how serious of an issue it is for our country. And we're trying to signal that to the international community by declaring it. Explain how climate change affects the Marshall Islands, and how large is this archipelago of islands? Yeah. Well, it's tiny. I mean, we're, we're a coral atoll nation, so we're one of the smallest nations on Earth. We're only two meters above sea level. There's no mountains. And um, right now— uh, And how many islands? Uh, over 60 coral atolls. Yeah, the last that I checked, about. But I don't have the exact number. There's quite a few. It's spread across a lot of ocean. Um, but it's impacting us in a lot of different ways. Um, first off, uh, just two weeks ago before I came here, we had 16-foot swells of inundations that displaced over 200 people. Um, we're having disease and health outbreaks. We had over 1,000 cases of dengue outbreaks. How does dengue month. relate to the climate change? Well, apparently the um, mosquito-related illnesses, mosquito-borne illnesses, increase with climate change. And so these kinds of disease outbreaks are going to increase as climate change worsens. 
And so these are kind of the, some of the impacts that we're seeing. But we're also developing our national adaptation plan, and this is a national, we're calling it our survival plan. So we're not just looking at mitigation, you know, lowering our CO2 emissions and, you know, uh, solar panels. We're looking at actually changing the entire physical landscape of our island so that we can stay above water. Yeah. Kathy, two years ago at the climate summit in Bonn, Germany, that was actually hosted by Fiji, yeah. um, we were joined by you and your mother, um, yeah. the president of the Marshall Islands, Hilda Heine. I asked her about the legacy of nuclear testing in the South Pacific and the mm -hmm. Marshall Islands. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yeah, we d The, uh, the legacy of the, the nuclear uh, testing program uh, brings back um, the old issue of colonialism and how the U.S. has colonized the, you know, the Marshall Islands. To this day, we're still struggling with the legacy of the, uh, you know, what you call jellyfish uh, babies. Uh, we have people This who, is babies without babies bones. Babies without bones that were born by women who, were, uh, who lived in the islands that were uh, contaminated. And we still have people who have not returned to their homelands after 50 years of uh, being uh, displaced from their homelands. Uh, we have islands that were vaporized by the uh, nuclear testing program. Of course, these islands belong to people, and uh, those can never be uh, recovered. Uh, so we're still seeking nuclear justice for the people of the Marshall Islands. Mm -hmm. This is one of the, uh, the legacy of the U.S. Uh, uh, presence in our country. And it seems like uh, we're repeating with the climate change uh, issue coming on. Uh, also, same uh, uh, force from outside uh, being brought to uh, influence or to impact the livelihood of Marshallese. That's Marshall Islands President Hilda Heine. We're joined by her daughter, Katha Jetno Kitchener. They were together on Democracy Now! two years ago in Bonn at the summit. Kathy is part of the climate delegation. She is a poet. She is a climate envoy. You are, because you are a poet, share a poem with us. Um, yes, so this poem is actually my latest poem, and it's about that national adaptation plan I told you about. You know, as indigenous people, we're really rooted to the land, and so having to go about these negotiations and represent our nation, it can be really disheartening. Um, and so it's about that, but it's also about a cultural tradition called the Gemim, which is the first birthday where we celebrate our first birthday. It's the biggest one. So it's about how our cultural traditions really kind of bring us, give us hope um, and nourish us. And so this is the piece. Well, I should say the gay memes are is significant because children used to die at a high mortality rate. So it's a poem of survival. When my daughter whines, I tell her, say what you want in a nice voice. My nice voice is reserved for meetings with a view, my palm outstretched saying, here are our problems. Legacies rolling out like multicolored marbles. Don't focus so much on the doom and the gloom, they keep saying. We don't want to depress everyone. This is only our survival. We rely heavily on foreign aid, I'm instructed to say. I'm instructed to point out the need for funds to build islands, move families from Wado to Wado, my mouth a shovel to spade the concrete with, but I am just pointing out neediness. So needy, these small, underdeveloped countries. I feel myself shrinking in the back of the taxi when a diplomat compliments me. How brave for admitting it so openly. The allure of global negotiations dulls like the back of a worn spoon. I lose myself easily in a gamim. Gamim defined as feast, a celebration. A baby's breath endures their first year, so we pack hundreds of bodies under tents lined up for plates I pass to my cousin assembly line style. Our gloved hands pluck out barbecue chicken, fried fish, scoop potato salad, do like droplets of bup and mess. Someone yells for another container of jajimi. The speaker warbles a keyboarded song. A child cries. Mine dances in the middle. The MC shouts, Bogey, I didn't even mind. Your children are obstructing the view. Someone wheels a grandma onto the dance floor. The dances begin. Now here is a nice celebration of survival. Kathy Jetnil Kijiner, poet from the Marshall Islands. As we wrap up, yeah. the solutions that Marshall Islands is engaged with. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So I wanted to make it clear that you know we're not just victims of this kind of process and of what's happening. Marshall Islands is doing a lot in the forefront. We were one of the first countries to enhance our NDCs. We have a really ambitious 2050 renewable energy plan that we have solarized most of our outer islands. Um, and we've also we're leading the Climate Vulnerable Forum. We're the chair of this alliance of 48 nations of the most vulnerable nations. We're heading the high ambition 
Living Coalition, and we even started a, a Mad for Survival social media campaign while here, the Madrid Ambition Drive for Survival. And we've been going around getting as many countries as they can to join on to say that they're enhancing their NDCs. We're going to have to leave it there, yeah. but we will continue this discussion. Kathy Jetno Kitchener, Thank you. a poet and climate envoy from the Marshall Islands here at the UN Climate Summit. Congratulations to our news director, Mike Burke, and his wife, Michelle, on the birth of their baby boy on International Human Rights Day. Welcome to the world. And that does it for our broadcast. Thanks so much for being with us. Tell your friends. Let them know Democracy Now! is in Madrid, Spain all week at the UN Climate Summit. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.